Hey everybody, welcome back. Today is a milestone in the engine reassembly for the CBX. Uh, we're going to be mating the two uh, engine case halves back together again, so let's get to it. By the way, one thing I forgot to mention in the previous video when I was assembling the transmission uh, and starting to reassemble the engine is that a CBX engine takes seven different seals. And when you do a, you know, a ground up restoration like this, it's really good to do all the seals new. So uh, just to show you that I'm replacing all of the seals, here they all are here. And the other thing I wanted to point out is, you know, you want to replace this seal right here, which I've done. It's real simple, just slips right on here and then goes into the slot there on the case. And then also you want to replace that seal right there that goes into the alternator. And this one is a real tough one to, to install because it, it installs from inside the engine. So before you install your starter clutch and your gear and everything, you have to remove the, the, the roller bearings in there. Those come out that way and then the seal comes out that way. Then you have to reinstall the seal in that direction and then the roller bearing back in that dire direction and then you install your starter clutch. So it's a bit of a bear, but it's important because if that old seal was bad and it leaked, there's no fixing it unless you split the engine cases. So it's really important to get that one replaced. So now that everything is buttoned up on the upper case, remember this is the upper case and this is the lower case, we're ready to mate the lower case onto the upper case. Now before you do that, you want to kind of go through and recheck everything that we've done so far. You want to kind of go back and make sure all the rods are tightened to spec. And then you want to make sure that the main bearings have not rotated on you like that one at the end did in the earlier video. And then you want to make sure that this little oil galley right here has the, uh, the screen in there along with the plastic washers and everything. And then you want to make sure you have your rings here in place. That one and this one. And you want to make sure your new oil seal is here and your new oil seal down there, like I pointed out earlier. And then you want to make sure that your timing marks are still lined up and you want to recheck those. So as you recall, we have our top dead center mark there, the T mark right there. You want to line that up and then you want to line up this notch on the starter clutch gear and then inside you want to make sure that the that the mark on the um, on the primary chain gear the the timing mark on that is pointing straight down so if you've double checked all of that then you want to make sure you have all your oil seals in place so we have an oil seal here we have an oil seal here and then you want to make sure all your your uh, 
holes are, you know, your threaded holes are clean and you want to squirt a little bit of oil on the, uh, on the main journals. And then if you refer to the shop manual, the shop manual kind of points out how you want to have your shifting forks uh, positioned. And then it also tells you how to position your transmission gears right there. It explains which gear should be in which position. So to kind of show you what that is, as you can see here, I have my shifting forks located where the shop manual says. And then in the transmission gears, I have the gears positioned for the slots right there and right there and right here. These are the slots that the shift forks go into. So when you put the case on, then those shift forks will fall into place at that point. So then you want to double check in the shop manual again, and it shows you, you know, you have your two oil rings there, uh, O-rings there, and then it shows you where the dowels go. So you have a dowel here, here, and here. So the dowels that they're talking about are here on the end at each corner right there. And then you have this one back here in the back of the uh, case. So you just double check all those towel dowels are in place. The oil seals are in place. Your timing marks are set. Your fork grooves are in the right position. And your rings are in the position. And then you're good to go. So then the other thing that you want to follow very carefully, and it's pretty much spelled out in the shop manual. Let me pull this off so you don't get the glare in the camera. Is where to put the, the, uh, the gasket sealer in the uh, you know on the on the uh, engine cases so what you do is it says that you apply liquid sealant in the in the mating surface of the lower case okay so that's this case right here so basically you go around and you put the gasket sealer on all of these mating surfaces here and I'll be doing that and showing you how to do that. And then it points out that it do not coat this area. So what that is, at the bearings, do not coat at the, you know, at the end of the bearing right there. And I'll be cleaning all of this assembly lewd off at those mating surfaces like that. So you just kind of apply a little bit in this area here, but not at the bearing location. As it's called out right there. Then on the upper case, it points out specifically where to put the gasket sealer. And that would be only at these points right here. So to show you
Basically, you put it here where the dowel is. And at these points here at each end of the cases. And then another location is right here at this corner. So you put some sealer here, some around these holes here. Well, not really at the hole. Just kind of at this mating surface right there on all four corners. So to show you that again, if you don't have a shop manual, it shows specifically where to put the sealant. So now the sealant, there's a couple of choices. Now I've used this three bond liquid gasket for years now, and I've put many engines together with this tube. As you can see, I've used almost all of it. And this, along with Honda Bond and Yama Bond, these are the only three sealants that I would use. I mean, I'm sure Permatex makes one that's pretty good too, but, but I would only use three bond, Honda Bond, or Yama Bond. Now, I've heard that the same company makes all three, but I'm not sure about that. But it's sure they all look the same. They all have this gray look to them. So this is what I use, and it works great. So the other thing that I wanted to go over are the, uh, are the case bolts. Now, I've cleaned up all of the bolts that came out of this engine. And as you recall, this engine was in such a mess that the bolts are really not in that great a condition. I mean, this is probably the best one right here. But I, again, I cleaned up all the grease and everything. But I mean, some of them, some of them are, you know, fairly corroded or, or whatever. So I'm just gonna leave them like this because when I go back and repaint the engine, then these will all get a coat of paint on them and they'll look fine. I mean, you could have them replated, but it's not gonna deter from the overall restoration process. The engine will look beautiful when these are on and torqued down and then you paint you repaint the engine like I'm going to do, and the bolts will look beautiful. Now, and it's mainly because they're under the engine, so one would have to lay down on the ground and stick his head under the bike and check the bolts. Now, if you're gonna show the bike, like my, like my CBX that I entered into shows, I have had those bolts either replated or I put new ones in. So, but on this bike, I'm just going to put these in and then they'll be painted along with the engine. So what I do is when I am ready to put the gasket sealer on, I'll take a paper towel and I'll just go around and I'll wipe all the surfaces dry. Just like that, make sure all the oil residue is off. Now, I've already done this once, so I'm just doing it to kind of show you. And again, you want to make sure your uh, bearing edges are clean of the assembly lube. Then I take the tube and I squeeze 
a little on my finger and I just start rubbing it on to the case, giving it a, a thin film, nice smooth film of it. You just do a little bit at a time You don't have to worry about it getting dry or anything like that because it's, you know, it'll, it'll, uh, it stays pretty soft. It, it really doesn't dry hard until for quite a while. And you just do a thin film because you really don't want any to end up inside the engine and clog oil holes. A lot of amateurs will use, you know, the silicone stuff like Forma gasket and all that. And that stuff's a disaster because it gets inside the engine and plugs up oil passages. So you don't want any of this stuff inside the engine at all. You just want to go around and do a thin layer of it with your finger. And again, you just try to keep away from the actual leading edge of the main bearings. And you want to make sure you get every single surface. You don't want to have any exposed metal or aluminum at all. You just want to, you want to have, you want a, a consistent surface, a consistent coat on the entire surface. The reason you do a thin coat like this is so that when you put the cases together, it doesn't go spewing out on the inside of the engine. And again, you know, when that happens, pieces of this stuff can go and clog up oil passages. And you sure don't want that. Then, like the manual says, you want to go around and put it on the upper case where they have specified. And one of the places is right here at this dowel and at the back. So we'll put a little bit there right here at this kind of a square little detail at the end of the at the end of the block there it's just a kind of a square little detail right there and you want to do it on both sides Again, just follow the manual. And the other part is right here at this corner. And again, I don't know why the manual says that, but I do whatever the manual says. <laughs> Hanna knows better than me. Okay, so 
Now's the big moment. We're going to mate the lowercase to the uppercase. So here we go. Okay, so I got the case on there, the lower case. So you just kind of, once everything is mated together, then you just kind of go around and tap it a little bit with the rubber mallet to make sure that all your mating surfaces are, you know, flush together. Go all the way around. And when you torque down the uh, the bolts it'll you know bring it tight then and these engines I, I always get confused when it comes to those uh, setting rings in there obviously I was wrong that those rings went on the top they actually go on the bottom. So in the uh, previous segment, when I was putting these two halves together, I was having trouble getting them to seat. And then I realized that the rings actually go on the bottom. So disregard what I said about that earlier where those locating rings went on the top. They actually go on the bottom because there is no slot on this lower case for those rings only in the upper case. So once I flip those rings then it then it's seated properly. Now, if you notice, I took the uh, oil pan off, and the reason is, is because, first of all, I got to put the gasket in, but one of the bolts that go in, that, you know, bolt the two cases together goes right here, and of course, you need to do that before you can actually install the uh, oil pan permanently. So now we'll go ahead and put the bolts in and uh, tighten it down. So there are 14 bolts that go across for the main crank, uh, from the main bearings along the crankshaft. And uh, 10 of the bolts are this size right here. And then the other four are a little bit shorter and they go on the ends and it's important that you make sure that the washer is on each one of the bolts now I screw these in by hand I mean a lot of guys use uh, cordless screwdrivers and stuff, but I always do it by hand just in case there's some kind of a issue with the threads. That's one thing you don't want to compromise on. They should 
turn in by hand smoothly the whole way. If there's any resistance at all, then that needs to be checked out. And of course with a cordless, you don't know that. It'll just whiz right through it and you could have a damaged thread without even knowing it. And I just turn these until they show a little bit of resistance, then I stop. Because you want to be able to tighten these completely evenly. Okay, so I have all 33 bolts installed for the lower case. And what I do is I just, I get them down at the same point and I just snug them with one hand and make them all snug with one hand. Then I refer to the shop manual and it shows the case and it shows the sequence of how you tighten them. So if you notice there, you start with the crank ones and it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's a, there's a uh, you know, sequence of how you tighten these bolts. And then the torque specs are right here. And you have to follow those torque specs to the T. If it says 17 to 21, then more than likely I'll do it at like 18 or 19 or so. 18 and a half, something like that, right in the middle. I always like to go right in the middle. That way you don't run the chance of over tightening it or under tightening it. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now and then uh, we'll be done installing this lower case. So that's it for this video. So we got a lot accomplished today, finally. It's starting to look like an engine again. We got our two halves back together again. I've got all the bolts torqued down as per the shop manual specs. And the engine's looking really good. Again, a far cry from what it was when we first tore it down. So again, these bolts will all be paint it over when I when I repaint the engine and the engine really kind of stayed clean through the whole building process so it still looks really good and so in the next video I'm going to flip the engine over right side up for the first time and then we'll go ahead and install the rest of the pistons and then, uh, then we can hone out the cylinder and put the head on and put the cams on and all of that. So the engine's really gonna start coming together now. I've just got the oil pan kind of on there with two bolts right now. And I'll, uh, I'll put the gasket on and tighten that down later on. But anyway, thank you for watching and again, as usual, please subscribe to get uh, and then hit the bell to get notified of future uh, videos. And it won't be much longer now. Next couple of videos and this engine will be done. Then the fun starts because we will start putting the engine back on its frame. And that's a real fun process because what I do is I, I balance the engine on the, on the motorcycle lift here and it's sitting up there by itself and then I lower the frame down onto the engine and then the bike will start coming together. So that's gonna be in the next couple of videos now. So a uh, lot to look forward to. So again, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment. I try to respond to all of the comments. And uh, again, thank you for watching. So we'll see you next time.